Hello? Hey, how are you? I'm all good. You hear me? Yep. All right, perfect. Um, one second, sorry. Okay. All right. So, yeah, I, I took my uh my second exam for the blueprint, mm -hmm. um, blueprint full length two. So I ended up getting a five hundred one. I improved two points. Mm -hmm. Um, honestly, I expected a little more. Like mm -hmm. I, I thought I would get five hundred two, five hundred three. So I was a little disappointed, and it it was really weird too. Like this was the weirdest part. I thought I bombed chem fizz. Yeah, I thought I did really well in bio biochem, and I thought I improved on cars. I end up getting the same score for bio biochem from mm -hmm. like my first full length. Yeah. Um, and I ended up improving on chem fizz, which I thought I would bomb like by one point, And I improved yeah. psych by one point, regardless the, the, um, basically the main, what was um, the breakdown? The, yeah, I'm finding it right now. That's why I'm looking yeah. right now. The breakdowns this is the issue. My cars is the same. The breakdown is 126, 122, 126, 127. Got it. And after doing, um, I think at this point, probably a hundred like cars passages or so in the last two months. Oh yeah. I I've stagnated mm -hmm. with the same car score. And it it's so weird because I felt pretty, like pretty good about my cars. Like I thought I would improve at least a point. Um, I was using the strategy that you taught me mm -hmm. for every single passage, which, you know, included writing down a couple of short summary. Yeah. Which, um, is this this is a practice test from Jack Weston? Got it. Yeah. So yeah, it was it was unfortunate. I, I like bombed two of the passages specifically on the car section. That's what really sent my score down. Yeah. Um, but I think at this point, like I, I guess it makes the most sense to focus on cars a bit more because like I mean I'm seeing slight improvements here and there in the other sections, but yeah, with this English section there. I haven't even improved the point a point. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Have you reviewed uh this test yet? So I reviewed everything ex except a couple cars passages. Um because I was thinking about doing like doing one of them um with you. Mm -hmm. Um However, I wanted to ask. I mean, there's one passage which I got like four wrong. Yeah. So I did terrible on it. Mm -hmm. Then I also did a an AMC passage. This is practice yeah. today, but I did a little. Um, I got like five out of eight on it. There were eight questions. Okay. What do you think makes more sense for us to go over? I mean, you know, you're gonna probably say AMC, right? But I don't know. Um. Yeah, it could be either one. Um. If you have some, let's see. So you said that you reviewed everything, but just a, a few cars passages. Yeah. Yeah. Like I didn't do um one of the cars passages, which I was considering going over with you. Mm -hmm. Got it. Which uh, test was this? Was this like Los Angeles, Chicago? Right. Uh, It was Chicago. Got it. Okay. So yeah, we can go over whichever one you feel like you want to go over. Um Okay. Um I'm leaning I'm leaning towards the Chicago test, although it's not as representative. I just there's one passage especially like Sure. Yeah. We could do that. Wait, sorry. Should I be sharing? I should be sharing screen, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. 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 Are you able to see it? 
Let's see. Yep. Okay. So let's see if you can get the entire passage in view. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that works. Um. Okay. Yep, you can read and, and think out loud and tell me, like, you know, what arguments are are being said in you know each sentence okay thomas stern Eliot's poetry was characterized characteristically forward-looking that is concerned with the future all right what are they saying here it's poetry is concerned with the future um yeah i mean it's just spoke about things uh -huh. work. yeah Good. forward looking yeah however deeply embedded in the past his poetry has always been ordered to the sensibility of an age to come in the ways in which the poetry of an a e Hausman or a j a g k chesterton or a robert bridges or rudyard kipling was not all right any special word here yeah however yep. um contradicts the previous statement yeah perfect so we previously said that this person's poetry is concerned with the future now we're saying you know it's it's also embedded in the past um and then let's see his poetry was always has always been ordered to the sensibility of an age to come an age to come sounds a little bit like the future but I'm not sure but and then we have a bunch of these examples of people of poets whose poetry is not like this mm -hmm. so maybe i'll just do like some orange stuff to say that these are examples of people who have a different type of poetry mm -hmm. Eliot's poetry is still a living influence today and influence not always easy to spell out precisely because of its subtle omnipresence. Okay. Um, so his, uh, his influence is still, like it, it still exists, but it's just hard to kind of uh, see because mm -hmm. it, it's like subtle. It's seen a lot of things, but it's subtle. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. What can we write for this paragraph? Uh, okay. Elliot poetry past influential. Okay. So here's my issue. When, when I was doing this exam, I... I totally understand what like your strategy entails because yeah, like it's what you said last time. And I, I saw myself doing that where I'm thinking as I'm reading, like, what am I going to write down for each paragraph? Mm -hmm. That was helpful. The issue though, is I just write too much. Like I, like I end up writing four or five words. I don't know how to limit myself to like three, you know? Mm -hmm. So it just takes a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, um, when you, whenever you're in the first paragraph, like we don't know where it's going to go. So a lot of times we will likely have longer stuff in our map for that first paragraph. But as we kind of move forward and go through the next paragraphs, we begin to start to see what argument is repeated, AKA main idea. So then we can kind of write less just because we know, uh, we can hone in on what the author's argument is. Um, and also, yeah, if, it, if you're writing a lot, um, is it's less so like, uh, I guess, more so like if you're writing a lot, does it take a long time to write a lot or, or not? Because sometimes if you feel like you wrote too much, but it took you a small amount of time to write that much, um, doesn't make sense to spend more time to figure out how to make it shorter. But, but yeah, I would say that, you know, it can start off that way because what I just wrote right now is pretty long. I just wrote T.S. Eliot's uh, poetry forward-looking, but also embedded in the past, unlike 
these people that it's still influential today, but it's not easy to see because it's uh, subtle. Yeah, I mean, I just like on an exam, I won't be able to write out all of that. Mm -hmm. That's why, like, I don't know. I, I just how how would you shorten that? Yeah. So I guess I would shorten it by saying. T.S. Eliot, future and past and live subtly today. Maybe something like that. Okay. All right. But um, but yeah, when you highlight, like, of course, again, you can't highlight it in different colors, but, you know, when you're highlighting as you read through to kind of, because when I'm highlighting these words, that's me kind of processing what they're saying. And when I write the stuff in the map, I'm kind of like, just writing down the stuff that I highlighted. So I think that can be something that can work for you uh, in the future, just being able to highlight things like, properly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. And Elliot was not simply one of the products shaped by a modern poetry movement or school. Okay. Um, he was not affected by like a movement. Mm -hmm. yeah he's not the product of any type of you know or or this type of movement or school so they're probably going to say something like he he made this stuff by himself or something yep he was one of the most highly uh individualistic shapers in modern poetry if not its most individualistic shaper so what we said um shaper of modern poetry in a letter to Harriet Monroe, Ezra Pound writes with some excitement, normal for Pound, and some amazement less normal, that Eliot actually modernized himself on his own. Okay. Um, so, what can we treat this as? Or evidence, I guess, or like an example. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. So Ezra Pound, you know, wrote that Elliot modernized himself on his own. So so we so we have our new argument here that's saying that T. S. Eliot was an individual shaper of this modern type of poetry that he didn't learn it from a school or something and um the support for that argument is the ezra pound letter so we could write Um, I just wrote Eliot modernized poetry himself individually. RTA is a reference to authority, so that's just the support of the of uh, Ezra Pound's letter. Um, what exactly? Wait, what? What do you mean? Like, what is art? Is that like a short acronym? Oh, oh, RTA. Yeah, it's reference to authority. But like in refer for referring to what? Oh, the so so it's support for the argument that uh T. S. Eliot is this individualistic shaper, and the support for that is this uh Ezra Pound letter that set that uh wrote that Eliot was someone who modernized himself on his own. Oh, so when you're saying reference to authority, you're saying like Harry Monroe's authority. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, Ezra Pound. Ezra Pound, okay. Because yeah. the letter's to Harriet Monroe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Elliot's interest in religious questions was also an interest in cultural questions. How is it that people live? What they read and look at and what they believe about it? 
Yeah, so. So here we can see a new idea where they talk about Elliot's interest in religious stuff also was an interest in cultural stuff. Right. Oh, I can't hear you. Okay. Yeah, I can hear. All right. Yep. Um, we have a paper of his entitled "On the Place and Function of the Clerisy," which Elliot delivered in December nineteen forty four. All right. What can this be? What, an example. Yep. So, this passage so far has been giving us support for every argument thus far. So. Well, maybe the first paragraph isn't necessarily giving us evidence, but it's just kind of giving us, well, yeah, we can consider it support. Never mind. So yeah, good. Good job. This paper centers not on religion, but on culture and its transmission. Okay, so now he's talking about, they're saying it's culture-based, mm -hmm. how it transmits, so it's not religion, not a religion. Mm -hmm. Um. Elliot's clerisy is not the same as Coleridge's, which was primarily on the national, primarily the national church. Uh, so what is clerisy exactly? That's something I always forget. Like, is that the view of the church? Oh, I don't know. I mean, you know, we want to see if we can understand it based on the context, mm. but, um, but yeah, it's like a, I guess like a group of, or a group of people who are intellectuals, you know, like the word intelligentsia. Yeah. So something like that. Okay. I think, yeah. Elliot's clarity is not a class, but an elite. Person is born into a class, but some but becomes a member of Elliot's elite by reason of an individual superiority developed by training. Okay. All right. So I'm, I'm let me take a closer look at this thing after the word transmission. So it says Elliot's clerisy in quotes is not the same as Coleridge's, which was primarily the national church. So Coleridge, his definition of clerisy was the national church, I guess. But Eliot's definition of clerisy is not a class, meaning it's not something that you are born into. But instead of a class, it's an elite, which is something that you can become a member of by reason of an individual superiority developed by training. So maybe I'll just say something like that. Mm -hmm. So what can we say for this? Uh Elliot's elite training. Okay. Um, I put Elliot religious equals cultural. For example, the clerisy paper, clerisy elites by training, not born into like class. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
culture is transmitted by the whole people, not only by the elite. Um, clerics, here the clerics, not just clergy, often even chronologically disagree with one another and very often with the class and power. Oh, try that last. Try that again with the word uh, after the word often. Very often with the class and power. Oh, sorry. Um, where it says even, like over here. Even chronologically. Uh, try again. Even chronologically. Chronically. Chronically. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um. Okay, you know what? Let me restart. Mm -hmm. Culture is transmitted by the whole people, not only by the elite. Clerics hear the clerisy, not just clergy, often, even chronically, disagree with one another, and very often with the class and power. They are not even necessarily cultured persons. As in the case of an artist who rather provides nourishment for other people's culture. Okay. they're adding on to okay well they, they said culture transmitted previously they said now they're talking about it's transmitted by whole people not only by the elite mm -hmm. um and the clerics get yeah, a disagree so the clerics are not cultured people not necessarily culture. Let's see. Clerics. The clerisy, not just clergy. And clergy is like church people. So we're talking about clerics as being something that more than just church people. Um, and that they often disagree with one another and very often, you know, disagree with the class in power. Um, they are not even necessarily cultured persons as in the case of an artist who rather provides nourishment for other people's culture. So, so included in this Pharisee, there's people who are not necessarily elite, but also not necessarily cultured. And the, the example of that would be an artist that doesn't have to be cultured themselves, but provides nourishment for already existing culture through art. So yeah, so I guess I would say something like, what would you what would you say here? Um culture by uh not only by elite I, I just I find it hard to put things in my own words mm -hmm. also. Um Okay. So we could just say, you know, culture transmitted by whole people, not just the elites. Um, clerics don't have to be cultured, for example, an artist who makes things for other people's culture. Mm -hmm. He does not believe that theories of what could be done to save the world have all built have have all to be built on Christian foundations. So saying that not everything is built on Christian foundation basically like there's some things don't have Christian backing. Let's see does not believe that theories of what could be done to save the world have all to be built on Christian foundations, okay? But he believes that efforts at cultural unity must be put forth through the religious core. Okay. Any special word? But. Yep. Um, yeah, so mm -hmm. things that are Use like United Culture, transmit, I guess, culture. Uh have to use religion, like deep there has to be some sort of yep. religion so, law. So right before the contrast word, we say that um I guess they're talking about Elliot, that he does not 
he does not believe that theories to save the world have to be built on Christian foundations. So uh, he does not believe that, you know, that you have to use a Christian foundation. Then we have a contrast word, and then we say something different, right? And then we say that, you know, but he thinks that efforts at cultural unity must be put forth with a religious core. So you could see how the word, the sentence before the contrast word was saying something very different from what's after that contrast word. And usually what's after that contrast word will be something like something that gives us insight as to what the author is trying to argue or what the author's position is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Religious is the only idea large enough to make a culture around. Therefore, religion is cultural because cultures need religion. All right. What's being said here? That religion helps spread culture. Uh huh. So it's the only idea large enough to make a culture around. Therefore, religion is cultural because cultures need religion. So maybe I'll just say religion cultural, which is something we kind of said before, right? In paragraph three. Yeah. So good. Um, okay. An organization such as the League of Nations relies on prudential ethics, a balance of interests rather than an on religious ethics or a common interest. Okay. What does this, you know, fall under? An example. Mm -hmm. So we have, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, are they contradicting what was said or? What was that? So what what are they, like with this example, basically, what are they saying? I mean, there's a mix of religion. and. Oh, let me see. Organizations such as the League of Nations rel uh, relies on prudential ethics, a balance of interests rather than on religious ethics or a common interest. So this is an organization that I guess does not have, so we have to say rather than religious ethics or a common interest. So I think this is saying, well, I guess that there's a type of ethics here that is not specifically based on religion. I don't know yet what the purpose of it in this paragraph is for, but that's the most that I can, you know, kind of decipher here. Yeah, it and it, yeah, it does seem like, you know, it's not saying it does seem like it's kind of contradicting. But I'm not sure yet. Christians must must have high ideals. Any program that a Catholic can envision must aim at the conversion of the whole world. All right. What are we saying here? So anything that's like a Catholic, something that's Catholic will try to... Uh, I, I'm a little confused. What does conversion of the whole world mean? Like so spread a culture? Or... So let's see before that, right? So before that, what are, what are they saying? The like, League of Nations, you're saying way before? Um. Oh, you're saying that, yeah, so Christianity, Um. like things, Christianity is not the foundation of every, like, of cultural unity. Cultural unity can have a religious backing, but like, it doesn't have to be only Christianity. Yeah, so uh, right here where I highlighted um, Christians must have high ideals. Right? Yep. So, and then we have a colon, which will kind of indicate that what they're going to say is going to be like an example or something that will demonstrate that Christians must have high ideals. And so we see that the Catholic must aim at the conversion of the whole world. 
So when you ask about what what does conversion mean in this context, what uh what do you think it would mean? Spreading their religion, like I would think that's yeah, right? saying they convert the entire world into Christianity, uh, or Catholicism. That's an example of this of the argument that Christians must have high ideals. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times you you know this passage so far is nice in that we do have like that procession of like new idea aka argument and then something that elaborates that argument after and then some type of evidence or example and that's really nice um and you can kind of see that with the highlights with the different colors um with you know some green stuff then some orange stuff green stuff orange stuff green stuff orange stuff and then sometimes pink stuff but yeah. yeah. Um. However, in worldly affairs, the world is not always wrong, and the church is not always right. Okay. Anything special here? However, huh? there's a lot of contradictory like words in this passage. Mm -hmm. Just so much like but and however and yeah disagree not um okay so yeah contrast word and then saying that you know i guess the world is not always wrong and the church is not always right so so this is a paragraph that has a good deal of stuff in it that will likely be similar to what the main idea is. But if we just kind of take it from the top here, we can see that, you know, doesn't think that, doesn't think that, um, Okay, let's see. So there's a couple of things being said here, but I'm just going to write cultural unity is equal to the religious core. And then we have this example with League of Nations. I, I don't really understand that you know, like either, like what they're trying to say. But from what I can see that it's just saying that the League of Nations uses some type of ethics that is different from religious ethics. So that's... The most I can get from that. And then I wrote Christians high ideals. Uh, uh, Catholics wish to convert the whole world, but the church is not always right. So we do have, you know, a, a good amount of contradictory stuff here. But I think what we see that is repeated, because remember, a, a repeated ar uh, argument is going to be a main idea. And so I see in paragraph three, religious equals cultural and i see in paragraph five something similar cultural unity requires that religious core and anytime so like those that's like a repeated idea and that constitutes a main idea so now we have kind of like we're, we're kind of looking for something now or, or we have a good idea of where the passage is going to go now now that we have that.
which could be a main idea. Yeah. Okay. Insofar as his interest in religion involved saving civilization, Eliot with Yeats and Auden saw the 20th century has historically fallen from the golden time, which they locate in the Middle Ages. As Lucy McDiarmid has shown in detail. McDiarmid. All right, let's see what, so what did this say here? Um, so Elliot, Yeats, and Auden saw the Middle Ages a golden time. Mm -hmm. Yep, so, so this is kind of similar to the first sentence of the previous paragraph with theories that must be done to save the world. So in terms of religion saving civilization, you know, Elliot, Yates, Auden um, saw the 20th century as fallen and the golden time is the Middle Ages, which I guess is what, what they're saying about the golden time is like when people were very religious, I suppose compared to now or the 20th century mm -hmm. oh and then this mclucy thing like already i have a good idea or, or feeling that that's going to be our evidence for this but let's see they conceive of the middle ages imprecisely and vaguely populating it by few name few names other than dante chaucer and aquinas um and remaining at best only Fazardly aware of what historians today would call the total mentality of the Middle Ages. Okay. What are you saying here? Honestly, I don't really know. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, they're just characterizing the mentality. I, I don't know. So, so we what, know that these yeah. poets mm -hmm. have this belief that religious in terms of religion um the middle ages was the best time but then they're saying they conceive what are they saying there and precisely like uh-huh so maybe their belief in that the middle ages was a golden time is a consequence of them not having a good uh a precise conception of what middle the middle ages were actually like um and they and they're using some names of these other like medieval poets but you know we're saying populating it by a few names meaning that it's just a few people that they're kind of using as examples of why the middle ages was the golden time but really these poets like Eliot um are not really aware of what the actual like what a historian would say is the actual mentality of the middle ages okay so we can say what for this um Middle Ages, golden, but I mean, Elliot saw it as golden, but not didn't see the full picture or something. Yep, I put Elliot Yates, etc. saw 20th century as fallen from the golden age, which are the Middle Ages, but vague and don't have accurate idea of the, what the actual medieval mentality is. There is no doubt that Eliot's whole feeling for religion and faith was colored somewhat by the sentimental notion of the Middle Ages, common in cultured circles of his day. So he's a little biased by like sentiments yeah, of the Middle Age. Exactly. Uh this medievalism helped focus tension up forward, but to a significant degree, at least subconsciously toward the past. Okay. Circles back to like the beginning where he mm -hmm. said it was deeply met in the past, and that's now we know because of like his longing for the Middle Ages. Mm -hmm.
wrote Eliot's sentimental notion of Middle Ages and, and focuses on, on the past. So now if we look at, so, so if you kind of just look at, if I just read the highlights, um, it's like, you know, I call it caveman speech. So if I just read the highlights for like, let's say the first paragraph, it's Eliot's poetry, forward looking, future, however, past, meaning in my head, like I'm saying, it's also the past. And then we have these other poets who were not like this. And then we're saying again that Eliot's poetry is, is still influential today, but it's not easy to spell it out, like how it's relevant today because it's so subtle and omnipresent always mm -hmm. there and then we have the next paragraph um we're still talking about Eliot so we're saying it, it, that he's an individualistic shaper and then we have Ezra Pound's letter as evidence for that and then third paragraph Eliot's religious cultural um and then this the clarity like paper support for that and then religion culture transmission um not a class an elite person can be born into a class but needs to train to be part of the elite we talked about that in paragraph three and then paragraph four culture whole people not only elite artist other people's culture just tells us more about how it's more than just people in the church um and then we say you know the Christian foundations, but cultural unity requires that religious core. So essentially, what arguments do we see that are repeated here? Like I see this, religious is cultural, and cultural unity requires a religious core. And paragraph six... I think you also deleted paragraph seven, maybe? Like the summary? Yeah. Did I did, did I not write one? You did, you did, you did. I oh, it just disappeared it. for some reason. Maybe Alt Z. I don't know. Or Control Z. I don't I don't know. Yeah, it was there and then it just disappeared. But anyways. Yeah, let's see. Um Elliot has sentimental notion of Middle Ages focusing on the past. So, oops. And then maybe like paragraph six and seven, just because it's talking about this golden age of the Middle Ages, but uh, golden age of the Middle Ages where cultural culture is like essentially equal to religion. So, Okay. What do we say for a main idea here? Um. Uh, religion, culture has a religion, religious backing. Mm -hmm. But how do we connect that to the Middle Age? That's the only thing I'm. I'm not sure about. Um. Oh. Well. Maybe we don't even have to. Mm -hmm. Well, so I'll, let's let's try to like power through the questions because. Huh? Yeah. Behind so, on some main idea, Elliot believes culture requires religion. Mm -hmm. And I am putting. I'm just gonna put the screenshot in. Uh email to you mm -hmm. but yeah let's go uh let's try this question uh yeah this question out okay which the following would most weaken the claims regarding Eliot's poetry in a question like this i mean there's not much we could do apart from read the answers right can't really predict anything or do we, should we think like what did he say about poetry or what was his poetry like yeah so i mean you know if this so i guess like they're saying claims in plural so it could be a lot of things but 
whenever you do see that, uh, yeah, yeah. So I guess, yeah, we could just go go through each of them. Eliot's pro poems draw from and resemble Christian hymns of the Middle Ages. So Christian stands out to me there. Yeah. He was not about that Christian life. So mm -hmm. I don't think that's correct. Okay. So that'd be an X. Dante and Chaucer are still considered to be the great poets of their times. Um oh wait, sorry, this is asked for weakening, so we keep that A. Uh B Dante and Chaucer are still considered to be the great poets of their times. Um we can we can remove that. I don't think it would weaken the argument too much. Huh? Um Elliot is often championed by poetry readers who claim to be atheists, atheists. Um maybe, but yeah. Ezra Pound did not study history of religion all that extensively. Okay, so Ezra Pound, we can remove that. That was just from one example, one paragraph example. I don't think that would weaken it too much. Oh, so, um, yeah, when I first took a look at this, I was thinking if this is a main idea question or a structure question. Because if it was a main idea question, it would be kind of easier because we would just take our main idea and, and flip it. But since they're saying like weakens like the claims there you know there's more than one claim so i would say that this is not necessarily a main idea question just because they might be talking about some argument that is not in our main idea so um but yeah so yeah we would kind of just uh look at at each choice and kind of see it does the like if it's if this was true would it weaken any of the claims so we want to like line up these choices with you know what uh, with some claim that they mentioned in the in the passage um so like yeah if ezra pound didn't study history or religion would that play would that affect the uh author's like arguments I mean, maybe slightly, but mm -hmm. um, what, what? How would your main idea sound if you flipped it? That Elliot doesn't believe culture requires religion. Yeah, like maybe something like Elliot um, believes culture does not require religion. Okay. Um. So. Right. Uh, so it's asking most weekend. Um, Ezra Pound said Elliot modernized poetry himself. Mm -hmm. and... Yeah, I just yeah, I don't. I, the only D would be the right answer. Um. Do you hear me? Yep. Okay. So if we look at each of these, right? So D says Ezra Pound did not study history or religion all that extensively. Um, that, like, are we, is Ezra Pound's argument, you know, based on his ability to, or his knowledge of history or religion? No, I mean, he's just saying that Elliot Bonner has poetry. Yep. So whether Ezra Pound studied history or religion doesn't really matter, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So D should be out. Uh, C, Elliot is often cha uh, championed by poetry readers who claim to be atheists. What are your thoughts on that? I feel like we can keep that. All right, tell me what you're, why. I mean, the whole thing is that 
religious religion culture requires religion and so i mean okay if he's being supported by atheists i feel like that just might be too out of scope that's my issue i don't know if it's too out of scope like uh-huh yeah so since we're looking for claims made about Eliot's poetry, um, if it was true that most people who who like Eliot's poetry claim to be atheists, would that, I guess, weaken the claim made about Eliot's poetry? Um, if Eliot believed that cultural unity required a religious core, that is something that... Uh, that was said in the passage, but what also was said in the passage was that it did not need um, that foundation of that Christian Christian foundation, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't know if C would be that good, but we can leave it. What about B? I don't think it's B because that just has nothing to really do with anything. Yeah, right. I mean, they they mentioned uh, Dante and Chaucer like as examples, yeah, supporting how the Middle Ages was that golden age, but this wouldn't uh, weaken any other claims made by Eliot's poetry. Now, maybe in the main idea, maybe I should have written more than one main idea because that's definitely doable. Because we also did say in paragraphs one and two, as well as maybe somewhere else i think you remember I, you said something about full circle but with the thing about forward looking right mm -hmm. so you know in paragraphs one and two we're talking about his uh poetry being forward looking um and then paragraph two ezra pound said that Eliot helped modernize poetry so so we're kind of saying that Eliot's poems are this new type of thing, right? Mm -hmm. And, but if it was the case that Eliot's poems resemble Christian hymns from the Middle Ages, that would weaken the argument that Eliot's poetry is this is this new modern thing, right? Mm-hmm. So, so would it be wrong to consider like a the correct answer? Because if like we think about it from the fact that he said Christianity wasn't the only, it wasn't the end all be all like religion, mm -hmm. like it, like is that wrong? Because the way I thought of a being the correct answer, like a would weaken the claim because the author said that Eliot didn't think Christianity was like the only religion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think we're, uh, so yeah, we do talk about that, like, somewhere here, but yeah, here, like, he does not believe that we need to have Christian foundations, but we do need a religious core, right? Mm -hmm. So I think this provides some evidence that would uh, be kind of related to C. Because you could still have atheists who can see this cultural transmission from religion and, uh, you know, culture, but it doesn't have to be Christianity and it doesn't have to be like the same thing, even though I kind of wrote like they're the same thing, but it's kind of like more so just how culture must revolve around religion. But okay. up here in the first two paragraphs, we're talking about, like, we're talking about, I guess, Eliot's poetry, like, explicitly. Um, I mean, like, elsewhere in the passage, we talked about Eliot's particular beliefs, but uh, the first two paragraphs, I think, are the ones that talk specifically about Eliot's poetry. And we say that it's forward-looking, concerned with the future, um, and that that this was like something that he kind of made like or or helped he he helped modernize poetry so what would weaken that claim something that says that he 
did not modernize poetry, aka his poems will be similar to old poems. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I do have to go in like five, ten minutes. Do you have a session at six thirty? Oh no, I don't. Okay. Then I guess we can need like five to ten more minutes, but should I go through it fast? Sure. Um suppose that the United Nations was in the process of creating a textbook that was meant to give people a sense of the different cultures around the world. According to the author, Elliot would probably recommend that they. So, uh, something about including everybody. Um, maybe including religion. Yeah, would this be a main idea question or a structure question? Structure. Um, tell me why. Um, I don't know. I really just. So I think. I, yeah yeah so um so now this question stems asking us about different cultures around the world and what would elliot recommend and this is pretty much close to our main idea if we're talking about culture or you know making a textbook to help people learn about different cultures Eliot's argument, main idea, you know, in this pa passage is that culture re requires religion and culture like forms around religion. So I think we would want to look for something like that. And when we say religion, it doesn't necessarily mean that it must be Christian. So we want to look for something like that too. So for instance, A talks about how cultures influence each other, right? Yeah. Is that so is that something that the author talked about? No. Okay. So we can get rid of that. B agreed a narrow definition of what qualifies as culture. Probably not. Okay. Point religious re leaders to positions of authority in the process. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Avoid privileging Christian nations over nations of different faiths. So I so I put that. I remember I put that. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's a very tricky here because um because what I was saying before about how it could involve so this sentence here says that Elliot does not believe that you, that all this stuff needs to be built on Christian foundations and then we have our contrast word and we say that it does require a religious core and then they talk a little bit more about religion specifically or rather generally talking about religion and specifically saying that it does not need to be Christian. Right. So, so that's why in the main idea I wrote, Elliot believes culture requires religion, um, but that does not mean that that religion has to be Christianity. Mm -hmm. But like, I still don't really understand. I mean, D saying it's still talking about other religions. Kind of. I mean, it's saying that, um, well, so it's saying that Elliot would probably recommend that they avoid privileging Christian nations over nations with different faiths. Now, if that was the case, we would see something that the author would have written that would go something like, you know, like, okay, 
Christianity gets a lot of privileges compared to other religions, and we should not privilege Christi Christianity or Christian nations over nations that have a different faith. So, like, D would be compare comparing different religions, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, talking about how we shouldn't just, you know, we shouldn't have special treatment for nations that are Christian compared to nations with different religions. So that's what D is saying. Whereas C is saying that Elliot would recommend that they appoint religious leaders. So C is specifically, or rather is generally talking about religion. And, you know, if we're trying to make this textbook that people that teach about uh, cultures, like what would Elliot recommend? And we know that Elliot believes that culture requires religion. So it would make sense that he would recommend that we appoint religious leaders to put positions of authority because that means that that can help that cultural transmission that's uh, required. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So it's, yeah, mostly in this paragraph here. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So Lucy McDiamond's reasoning applies to which of the following? Um, Elliot Yeats and Auden were, were guilty of oversimplifying the Middle Ages. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I got this one right, actually. It's the only one I got right. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have much time, so let's let's do a different one. Sure. Um, yeah, so here only 46% got this right. Suppose a new essay by Eliot was found that praised the Catholic Church as a great promoter of medieval cultural values. How does this affect the opinions in the passage? Um, yeah, so I put C. Um, it would support some ideas, but not all. Let's see. New essay by Eliot was found that praised the Catholic Church as a great promoter of medieval cultural values. How does this affect the opinions in this passage? Okay, let's see. So we know that, well, okay, so okay, so we, we know that Although although Elliot says that you do not need that Christian core or foundation, Elliot does say that you do need a religious core, and um and then Elliot and a bunch of those other poets saw the Middle Ages as that golden age, and why like why would they think that way? Maybe because in the Middle Ages, people were very religious, and specifically, their religion was like Catholicism, but you don't need it to be Catholicism, but if it's Catholicism, it still, it still kind of proves his point that culture requires religion. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, so so if he praised the Catholic Church as a promoter of medieval cultural values, that would be supporting um, the main idea, right? Yeah. So I know that C, C is a really good choice because, you know, it seems like it would help support like most of the ideas, but we also did say the things about it does not need to be Christianity. So I could see how how C would be a tempting answer choice. But I think that it would really just support that main idea. 
because it's it's showing that because our main idea is culture requires religion catholic church the religion medieval culture the culture and that's pretty much exactly uh what our main idea says okay yep. does that make sense more or less yes yeah yeah um i just i don't understand how would the fact that he did talk about christianity how do we not let that affect us when we're selecting an answer sorry say that again the fact that it talked about him not like him not saying christianity is the most important how do we not let that affect us as we're selecting an answer oh yeah so so uh so he says that we do not need a foundation of christianity and then we had our contrast word and then we said that you still need a religious core mm -hmm. or culture so that's really saying you need in order for culture to exist and to be transmitted you need a religious core and it does not need to be christianity but it could be Christianity. And if we're talking about the Middle Ages, uh, that's implying, I guess, Christianity, because that was really big in the in, a, in the mid Middle Ages. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, was that it? Yeah, I mean, I just have to go because I have a, a sure, meeting. Sure. Got it. For an organization. But, um... Yep. Okay. Yeah, so I would just uh look at the map that we made today and kind of compare it to, like, what you wrote. It's okay if you didn't write, like, a full map, but uh also, you know, check the main idea that you got um and compare it to the main idea that we got for this passage. And, of course, you could do that with, like, reviewing the passages anyway, because, you know, how it tells you, like, the main idea in a... Mm -hmm. Or word so that can be a good way to kind of test feedback like what did you get as your main idea when you read it and then you know compare that to what the they say the main idea is okay yep. how is the what's the best way again about just reviewing cars just comparing my maps like the main ideas mm -hmm. like i get from the maps yep yep yeah i would say that you know if you don't want to do like the full map um at the very least, you know, be able to get an idea of what the main idea is and then compare that to what they say, you know, in the review or uh, what they say the main idea is. Mm -hmm. and then, and you know, yep. How long should a, a full length review be? Because like it was taking me so long yesterday. Mm -hmm. I got like an incredibly long time. Yep. You said that. So this involved you doing the blind review. Yeah. All right, and uh, um, like yep. line review, and then after that, like actually reading what the answer choice are saying, and then adding that to like the Anki that I have of like wrong, yep, like things I got wrong, and like yep, it, it's just it, it was like a lot of time, and I don't know how like if that's if that's how even helpful. I would say it, uh, it's helpful, except like tell me like how much time I guess you're spending. Well, bio bi 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 biochem. Mm -hmm. um took like five six hours really and i mean it was just on and off too i was just getting slightly distracted i just i also didn't fully know like um like there were just certain things i guess i could i was could be more efficient next time but i don't know it just took a very long time yeah i mean you didn't you reviewed it the day after you took it right yeah so but yeah, it shouldn't really take that long. How uh, long should it take? I would say like for the blind review of a section. Um, I forgot like how many questions roughly did you get wrong for each section? Like, uh, it was like thirty. Okay. For biology, thirty yeah. for cam. Okay. Or no, I I don't yeah. remember. But it was around like twenty five to thirty. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe like like two hours max for each section or for all for each, for each okay say yeah so that starts with the blind review and then the regular review and your blind review could involve like i guess 
doing like when you do your blind review like you learn about the material from like what source like maybe like some video online or something yeah i mean also i read explanations and sometimes on like reddit someone posted an expo like a, a question too yeah so like sometimes blueprint doesn't i don't fully get it so then i look on what yeah yeah so yeah you can you can send me screenshots of questions and stuff that uh you know don't quite make sense um and we can kind of go over that when we meet um yeah but yeah i would say like maybe like two hours for each section for your blind review um and you know when you're doing a blind review you're just doing the ones you got wrong right yeah sometimes but that's the thing yesterday i was doing some that like i felt i guessed on you I know see. like yeah and i got it right got it got it okay yeah i would say yeah try to try to make it like two and a half okay. hours max okay and when is the next time uh like when are you free this week um let's see so you're not able to meet any time like in the afternoon right uh i am i mean i just prefer a little earlier on just because later on in the afternoon I lose, i'm starting to lose focus oh yeah yeah i mean like like around like maybe like 1 p.m or 2 p.m something like that. yeah that's fine okay let me put you in for 2 p.m on tuesday does that work um yeah it should be fine you don't have anything on wednesday right uh no i have well i, I do have 1 p.m on wednesday if you'd prefer but it would be from one to two or from one to three um one to two or one to two thirty something like that i just have someone at 3 p.m so yeah do 1 p.m to whatever okay so we could do wednesday um just because that'll give me a day extra of like doing practice prompts and maybe seeing something that doesn't make sense mm -hmm. uh so then wednesday from like 1 to 2 30 um yeah okay oh wait oh yeah all right, so I put you in for Wednesday the third, um, one p.m. Eastern. Um, mm -hmm. there you okay? Yeah. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Send me. Yeah. Send me questions and stuff. So when we meet on Wednesday, we can go over that stuff. And uh, and yeah, with cars, compare the maps, compare the main ideas that you get, and uh, that way you'll get feedback. Um, and kind of and then for like this passage, like kind of look at what we did and what you did when you were reading it and we can compare you can compare them that way as well yeah and if you can send me the recording if possible just for yeah. today's session yeah i can do that okay thank you right. awesome so i will see you on uh wednesday okay and what is the total for this i don't want to forget oh yeah let me see it's like It's 98. Okay. Yeah. Um, also, how do like the things work? I remember you said it was a 75 an hour, right? <laughs>